Hey guys, what's up? Today we're gonna take a look at 10 rare JRPGs that I think you should play. And I'm not gonna cover those games that I'm always talking about, like the Grow Lancer games, Lost Dimension, Vandal Hearts, Eternal Poison. Those are pretty good games, but I feel like I've already recommended them tons of times in this channel and I think they have gotten enough attention. So today I'm going to show you instead 10 games that I think are great, that I think you should play and I barely have covered in this channel. So, let's begin! Number 10. Half Minute Hero This game is one of the funniest and also quickest RPGs ever made, mainly because of its awkward but addictive gameplay mechanics. You go on to these landscapes trying to make a couple of little quests that will help you in your fight against the boss of each stage, all this before you run out of time, which is always 30 seconds, half a minute. There's no real battle system here, since all you do is level up your character so he can fight by himself without you doing anything at all against pretty much every single enemy. And I'm only talking about the main game, since you unlock other routes with other characters later on. But the idea behind this excellent RPG is just marvelous, just like the name of the company who made it, Marvelous Entertainment. So it's a game that mixes elements from real-time strategy and action while becoming its own unique product. This one's the least rare on the list, but I strongly suggest you check it out either way. Number 9. Is 6 The Ark of Napishtim I'm a big fan of the Ease series, and I've always recommended Ease 7 for the PSP, which was kinda underrated before. No point in talking about his origin or his 8 or memories of Salsetta, since they're not that rare at all and are kind of the ones that gave the series a little fame. Is 6, however, it's sort of unknown. It's an action RPG that came out first for PC, then internationally for the PS2 and the PSP. I have barely recommended this game in my channel, and I don't know why. Sure, it's not that rare, but maybe only for those who are already fans of the series, like me. It's a pretty solid game, even though unlike later entries in the franchise, here you're just Adol Christian, the protagonist, main character of almost every single Eve game out there. Yup, no party members, but trust me, it's as good as the others. Try this out even if you're not a fan of the series, maybe it'll hoop you up like others did, or maybe this will be your first Eve game ever, which is definitely not a bad entry into the saga. Number 8. God Wars Future Past God Wars is a hidden gem for any system it came out for, and it hasn't gotten much attention mainly because most gamers don't play strategy RPGs anymore. And with that subgenre so close to oblivion, no wonder this rare game hasn't truly flourished. Granted, it's not a masterpiece or anything like it, granted its gameplay mechanics have been done before, but it sure is a must, in my opinion, for any fan of tactical RPGs with obvious influences from previous classics. God Wars is a solid title in the genre, with a nice and friendly gameplay that could very well serve as a great entry into the strategy world of JRPGs. So if you have a Vita, or a PS4, or a Switch, this is a game that you definitely need to check out. After all, how many strategy RPGs are there for consoles nowadays? Number 7. Are No Search, Ode to an Unborn Star This game is a prequel to the underrated saga of R. Tonelli Co., with two entries on the PS2 and one also for the PS3. I have never considered that trilogy as rare, even though not too many people are familiar with it, but when it comes to R. No Search, and considering it's a sequel to yet another game that never came out of Japan, called CL No Search, 
I can't help but think of the word rare. So it's a turn-based RPG with only two characters in your party while in battle, your main attacker and your singer that attacks with magical songs. No, it's not a rhythm game at all. It's a solid RPG with pretty interesting mechanics. So if you want to get into the Art Tonelico series, I think you could start with Arno Sorge, since after all, story-wise, it is the prequel of them all. And if you're already a fan of the franchise, then you can't miss this game out. It also came out for the PS Vita, but that version is very rare and very expensive, so I recommend the PS3 one instead. Number 6. Blackstone Magic and Steel Blackstone is an exclusive for the Xbox made by a company from Taiwan, but published by Idea Factory in Japan. It's a very rare action RPG mostly unknown because most critics trashed it when it first came out. So why is it on this list and why should you play it? There's a two-player co-op mode that makes things fun and ongoing at the same time. Playing this game on a single-player mode might indeed be a little repetitive, boring or perhaps even a mediocre experience, which is the real reason behind its negative criticism. But I played this game with a friend a long time ago and I clearly remember having fun because of its fast-paced combat and its flowing gameplay mechanics. Of course, it's definitely not a hidden gem, nor is it a great RPG, but I think it's a really cool title you should play, but definitely with another player. Number 5 Summon Knight 5 All Summon Knight games were made by a company called Flight Plan until they went bankrupt in 2010. Flight Plan also made one of my favorite strategy RPGs of all time, and that is Eternal Poison for the PS2. The IP was then from publisher Banpresto, but they were acquired by Bandai Namco, and so they allowed this other title to be developed and published way past the PSP lifespan, making it one of the last games made for that console. Well, I'm so glad Gaijin Works, whose director was head of working designs, localized the game outside Japan, and so we all finally got this in 2015, Summon Night 5. It's a strategy RPG with strong visual novel elements, but mainly because of the dialogues, meaning there's a lot of conversation you'll have to read but the mechanics of the battle system and all the simulation it offers within its fantastic world is reason enough to delve deep into it. It's a great game, totally a hidden gem, that outside Japan got a physical release for a limited period of time, so it's very rare to find. Nevertheless, it's still digital for those who don't want to bother trying to hunt down the printed version of it. Number 4. Ogre Battle March of the Black Queen Came out for the Super Nintendo and the PlayStation 1. Ogre Battle is becoming more rare and rare nowadays with people forgetting it ever existed. It was originally released for the Super Nintendo and Complete in Box is one of the most expensive JRPGs for the system. The PS1 port is also expensive, but not as much as the original, and it's a very, very good port. The game's a real-time strategy RPG in which you manage several different groups of characters which are part of your army to conquer and free some territories around its vast world. So there's also a lot of micromanagement involved, but definitely balanced and done right. Every time you get in touch with an enemy, an encounter starts in which you have almost no control over the flow of battle but your previous strategy in managing these characters is what counts towards obtaining victory. So overall, I can't believe this excellent RPG is that rare nowadays, considering it's a cult classic that doesn't deserve at all to be forgotten. Number 3. Lost Kingdoms here we have another exclusive, this time for the GameCube, developed by famous company From Software, the people behind the Souls series. Oh yeah, they did this amazing and truly unique JRPG 
that revolves around a princess that starts a quest on finding her father, the king, in order to put a stop to the black fog, which is spawning monsters everywhere. To battle them, she acquires a runestone that serves as a medium to summon monsters through special magic cards to battle her enemies. You can summon four monsters per battle, turning the game into an action role-playing adventure that is highly addictive to play. I know the game lacks in-depth story and character development, but you shouldn't let that turn you down, since the gameplay mechanics, which involve the management of all these cards and their elemental creatures, and its battle system, of course, are so damn good, you'll be having a blast. Number 2. Brave Story – New Traveler It's a turn-based RPG that's based on the novel and manga with the same name by Miyuki Miyave. Developed by an independent company called Game Republic, which sadly is no more. So XC did us the favor of localizing this excellent game, a hidden gem that's definitely a must-play if you have a PSP, also because it was an exclusive for the system. It's a great game with really high replay value, since after beating it, you can add several new characters to your party and play an extra part of the game to fully complete it. What's cool is that the main character is playing a video game before he's thrown into this fantastic world to start a quest in order to save his best friend. So he's a gamer, eh? Anyway, this game has some really classic features from turn-based RPGs, and playing it quickly reminds me of all those great RPGs for the PS1 and SNES era, also becoming its own modern product. So this is a highly recommended game that you definitely should play. Number 1. Folklore Speaking of Game Republic, here's yet another one of its greater works, Folklore, an exclusive for the PS3. Hard to believe they're the same people who made Brave Story, since the games are completely different. Now that's what I call talent. And Folklore is an extremely unique experience as an action RPG with a very original battle system that involves absorbing souls from the enemies to learn different attacks and skills. You can play as two main characters, each with its own background, that are mysteriously drawn into this fantastic gothic village that resembles the lunatic world style of Beetlejuice or Alice in Wonderland. The story of each character is really good and solid, with art and music mixing together to create a truly bizarre adventure. Folklore might not be that rare, but it's definitely a unique title that I strongly believe you should play. So that's it guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you enjoyed also this scenery. It's a beautiful place called Tapalpa in Jalisco, Mexico. Oh yeah, it's an amazing place. So about those 10 games, if you've already played them, don't forget to share your opinion on them in the comment section below. And if you haven't played them, well, what are you waiting for? These are great, great, great games. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time.